Ladies and gents, I'm Rusiji Reacts, and this is What Happened Before History: Human Origins by the channel Kuz Gazat in a nutshell. Humans, we have been around for a while now. When we think about our past, we think about instant civilization, the pyramids, stuff like that. This is only a tiny, tiny part of our history. Yeah, the pyramids was like what, four thousand years ago. We go way past than that, fifty, seventy thousand, even more than that. So yeah. Uh, this video is going to be fun. I wrote quite a few Cause Gazzard videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards. There's a playlist I wrote for it. Cause Gazzard reacts and something like that. Uh, check out the playlist too. Like, you know, CGP Grey, Real Life Floor, uh, Oli Sarcastic Production, Internet Historian, things like that. And yeah, let's watch this one. The world we live in feels normal, ordinary. It feels like this is just how humans exist and always existed. But it's not. Never before have we humans lived in a world as sophisticated and engineered to our needs as today, giving us the luxury to forget about ourselves and not worry about survival. Food, shelter, security, all of this is more or less taken for granted. But we're a special few. For more than 99.99% of human history, life was completely different. And there's no such thing as just one human history. Yeah, when you know people make this, uh, you know, people make this argument a lot that we as humans are, you know, one of those kind of people who take things for granted, you know, and we don't we don't realize what we what we had until we lose something, so we are not grateful or something like that. Obviously, Kazgazar is not making that point, but I'm just this just reminded me of that. Like, I don't think that's the case. I think we are very singular, uh, focused people. I mean, if there is 10, 15 things around us getting better, I don't think we have capacity to focus on all of them and appreciate it. So if it works, we don't notice it until it goes wrong and it basically affects our life, then we notice it. So it's not like, you know, this philosophical thing people say like, how good you have things, you don't realize it until you don't have it. That's because we can't focus in lots of places. We have really singular focus. We can focus in one or two things and appreciate that, but not 10, 15 things. I mean, I don't think our brain is wired that way. Our story begins six million years ago, when the tribe of Homonini split and our relationship with the apes ended. 2.8 million years ago, the genus of Homo. The six million years. Man can't even process that. What the hell? Six million? Two thousand years ago, there was Romans. And that feels like there was like ages ago. It's ridiculously long time. And it was just two thousand years. Millions of years. Can't even process that time. The first humans emerged. We like to think of ourselves as the only humans, but this is far from the truth. There when many we, species. Homo sapiens sapiens, came into existence 200,000 years ago, there were at least six other human species around. Cousins of comparable intelligence and ability, which must have been incredibly scary, kind of like living with aliens. Some of them were very successful. Homo erectus, for example, survived for two million years. 10 times longer than modern humans have existed. The last of the other humans disappeared around 10,000 years ago. We don't know what caused them to die out. Modern humans have at least a few percent of Neanderthal and- Come on, man, really. Either we kill them or we get, basically all of them merge into us or something. And we just don't know it yet. Maybe future discovery will reveal that. Probably we killed all of them the human DNA, so there was some mixing, but certainly not enough to be a merger between species. So we don't know if our cousins went away because they lost the battle over resources, or because of a series of minor genocides. Either way, only we minor. remain. Back to the beginnings of humanity. 2.8 million years ago, early humans used tools, but did not make a lot of progress for nearly 2 million years. Until they learned to control fire. Fire meant cooking, which made food more nutritious, which can... <laughs> we are basically running away from all predators, wolves and lots of things. And then suddenly one day somebody discovers fire. And I can't just help but imagine, you know, that Rowan Atkinson style, just, you know, smirk and just sitting down on a rock and just smirking at the wolf like, I'm the big dog now. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. That's just, that just image popped up in my mind there. Contributed to the development of our brain. 
It also produced light and warmth, which made days longer and winters less gruesome. On top of that, it not only scared predators away, it could also be used for hunting. A torched wood or grassland provided small animals, nuts and tubers, that were pre-roasted. Damn, From okay. 300,000 years ago, most of the different human species lived in small hunter-gatherer societies. They had fire, wood and stone tools, planned for the future, buried their dead, and had cultures of their own. But most importantly, they spoke to each other, probably in a kind of proto-language less complex than ours. If we had a time machine, how far would we be able to go back, steal a few babies, and raise them today without anyone noticing that they're a bit different? There is much debate. Anatomically modern humans emerged to me. I'm pretty sure because of all the mutation over the years that the person would look a bit different. Pretty sure they would. And even the behaviors would be a bit different because there's lots of things that is just, you know, from the start, from the, you know, baby's time, there is certain behaviors that babies even, you know, shows. It's just, I guess, pre written in our DNA because of all the mutation. I'm pretty sure even the babies would act differently of the past. I don't know. 200,000 years ago, but probably 70,000 years is as far as we could travel back and still snatch a behaviorally modern human. Before that, the babies would probably lack a few crucial gene mutations necessary to build a brain with modern language and abstract thinking abilities. At some point around 50,000 years ago, there was an explosion in innovation. Tools and weapons became more sophisticated and culture became more complex because at this point, humans had a multi-purpose brain and a more advanced language to communicate information with each other effectively and down to the last detail. This allowed much closer cooperation and is what really makes us different from any other creature on Earth. Not our comparatively weak bodies and inferior senses, but the ability to cooperate flexibly in large groups. Yeah, I mean, it, when it comes to innovation is that you, you just need to make a one small discovery, but in a whole another field. And that will basically trigger one after another major discoveries. Like, as soon as, uh, you know, humans starts to learn that, look at that, we could make uh, something out of, you know, wood or something, just make a tool. That's it. After that, they're going to get creative and make different type of tools. And it's just going to be completely different than they, what they were before. Groups, unlike, for example, rigid beehives, or intimate but tiny wolf packs. As our brain evolved, we became able to do something life had been unable to do up to this point. One, expand knowledge quickly. Two, preserve the knowledge gained over generations. Three, build on past knowledge to gain even deeper insights. This seems daft, but until then, information had to be passed on from generation to generation, mostly through genetics which is not efficient. Yeah, it's Still, really not. for the next 40,000 years, human life remained more or less the same. There was little to build upon. Our ancestors were only one animal among many. Building a skyscraper without knowing what a house is, is hard. But <laughs> while it's easy to be arrogant in our attitude to our ancestors, this would be ignorant. Humans 50,000 years ago were survival specialists, they had a detailed mental map of their territory, their senses were fine-tuned to the environment, they knew and memorized a great amount of information about plants. Almost definitely. If we go back to that time without any, basically, tools that could help us and we just try to survive on that, basically, in the wilderness, we are dead, basically, and they will not. So, I mean, it just, yeah. Plants and animals. They could make complicated tools that required years of careful training and very fine motor skills. Their bodies compare to our athletes today just because of their daily routines, and yeah. they lived a rich social life within their tribe. Survival required so many skills that the average brain volume of early modern humans might even have been bigger than it is today. As a group, we know more today, but as individuals, our ancestors were superior to us. But then, around 12,000 years ago, in multiple locations, humans developed agriculture. Everything changed very quickly. Yeah. Before, survival as a hunter and forager required superb physical and mental abilities in all fields from everybody. With the rise of the agricultural age, individuals could increasingly rely on the skills of others for survival. 
exactly agriculture is literally change our basically our whole species we start to build societies towns cities there are kings now since they own lots of farms you know you don't have to constantly be, constantly be on the move to, you know you don't have to basically hunt your prey otherwise your entire basically your pack or whatever starves or something now you have agriculture now you can settle down you, you know creates towns cities kings yeah this meant that some of them could specialize. Maybe they worked on better tools. Maybe they took time to breed more resistant crops or better livestock. Yeah. Maybe they started inventing things. As farming got more and more efficient, what we call civilization began. Agriculture gave us a reliable and predictable food source, which allowed humans to hoard food on a large scale for the first time, which is much easier to do with grains than meat. A food stock required protection, which led to communities living together in tighter spaces. First, early defense structures were built. The need for organization grew. The more organized we got, the faster things became efficient. Villages became cities, cities became kingdoms, kingdoms became empires. Connections between humans exploded, which led to opportunities to exchange knowledge. Progress became exponential. About 500 years ago, the scientific revolution began. Mathematics, physics, astronomy, but yeah, basically, if you're not, you know, scraping for survival every single day just to hunt and eat and just live, and now you have bulk resources, then you can let out your creativity and you can just basically think about other problems. If your if your just basic needs are just fulfilled, then you can think about other things too. So yeah, civilization got built. There is a surplus of food now. So you know, human can become more creative now. Biology and chemistry transformed everything we thought we knew. The industrial revolution followed soon after, laying the foundation for the modern world. As our overall efficiency grew exponentially, more people could spend their lifetime contributing to the progress of humanity. Revolutions kept happening. The invention of the computer, its evolution into a medium we all use on a daily basis, and the rise of the internet shaped our world. It's hard to grasp how fast all of that happened. It's been about 125,000 generations since the emergence of the first human species. About 7,500 generations since the physiologically modern humans saw the light of day. 500 generations ago, what we call civilization began. Yeah. 20 generations ago, we learned how to do science. And the internet became available to most people only one generation ago. Today, we live in the most prosperous age humanity has. Yeah, 1990s, sure, but it became accessible in 21st century, let's be honest. Has ever experienced. We have transformed this planet from the composition of its atmosphere to large scale changes in its landscape and also in terms of the other animals in existence. We light up the night with artificial stars and put people in a metal box in the sky. Some have even walked on our moon. We put robots on other planets. We've looked deep into the past of the universe with mechanical eyes. Our knowledge and our way of acquiring and storing more of it has... Okay, I can uh, say something more better. We know how to basically deflect objects that could make an entire species and every species of the planet extinct. We could harness energy directly from the sun. I mean, you know, we could create basically, uh, you know, visual, you know, simulations through computers. I mean, these are big things. Exploded. The average high school student today knows more about the universe than a scholar a few centuries ago. Yeah. Humans dominate this planet, even if our rule is very fragile. We are still not that different from our ancestors 70,000 years ago, but your lifestyle has existed for less than 0.0. .0 and lots of those things also get carried over to our DNA. We lots of, you know, we have lots of primal, uh, you know, uh, tribal thing in our in, in us basically, survival instincts and things like that. That doesn't make sense today, but we just have it in our DNA. 0.01% of human history. From here on, there's no saying what the future holds for us. We're building a skyscraper, but we're not sure if it's standing on a solid foundation or if we're building it on quicksand. Yeah, okay. Let's leave it with that. For yeah, I, it, it could be that, or it could be like Fallout 4 or something like that. Or it could be, you know, uh, we, we, 
things happen like fallout Pe- people population goes immensely low like in millions because most people are dead knowledge goes away so, you know specialist basically dies out so there is lots of uh, you know knowledge and specialty that people have is no longer around slowly slowly people try to forget about things and eventually we come to a point where we don't even know how good we used to be even that could happen or we could become a multi-planetary species and just advance basically you know we could live on different planets or who knows for now the next time you miss your train your burger is not hot enough or someone cuts in line remember how special this made-up human world is Maybe it's not worth being upset about all those little things. This video was supported by audible.com slash nutshell. Yeah, people, uh, go to audible.com for slash nutshell and support this channel. I mean, if your burger is not hot enough, there is a reason to get upset. I mean, I understand, you know, people used to have really hard life in the past. But what does that do with the life of today? I mean, there are people who are starving in the world, but that doesn't change the fact I'm still hungry, man. I want food. So, you know, it's <laughs> this is it's that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, about the future, you know, people in, in the 1900s, start of the 1900s, basically thought that by now we would have flying cars around. Rather than driving on the road, we would be flying. If you look up and there would be all flying cars or something like that. Obviously, that didn't happen. That doesn't seem a good idea anyway. I mean, why would you do that? You have cars on the road. If you want, you can take a helicopter. You can go to a plane or something. So flying cars is a massive issue. If your car fails in the air, you're just going to plummet down. You're going to die. So it doesn't feel right. So, you know, there's lots of assumptions people make. Like, what are we going to be in the future, 50 years? Yes, we could be really advanced species. Or... There could be a massive war and we go backwards in time basically really backwards and there will be a time where we don't even know that once we used to have technology that we have today who the hell knows all right people that was what happened before history human origins if you like my reaction don't forget to like and subscribe check out the reaction today there's a link in the description check out the cast for the playlist check out the end cards and i'll see you next time